Hey everyone, so this is mostly Dan's session. I'm trying to get this done in a few minutes, a recap of what we talked about last year. Um, I think everything I proposed last year is kind of working as intended. Yes, I will document it and I'll write something up, put it out for review and then I'll, I'll stick it up on Labs and add a link to all those irritating emails my scripts send out. I don't think the MM stable concept of giving people a non-rebasing stable tree to develop against, I don't think that's as successful as I hoped because it just takes so long to get stuff stabilised and into the stable tree. So if you're working against MM stable, it's generally two to three weeks out of date. But that's fine. If people want to work against a non-rebasing tree, please go ahead and develop against MM stable. It, it should be a good target. Please at least do a test merge with unstable before you send it out, just so I find out how much shit is about to hit my fan. And um, I am getting increasingly active about hurrying people along. Please try and get this stuff finished. Don't leave it sitting in an unstable state for three weeks. And I'm also getting a bit more active about when people send out a patch set and I'm not sure about it and I'm not sure about the person. I just, just let it go nowadays. I'll often send people a private email just saying, I'm not going to merge this at this time. Please let me know a week from now if you believe there's some action I should take. And people seem to be appreciating that. I don't like hearing about maintainers who just you send it and nothing happens. I think I'd like to provide people some feedback. And fourthly, um, I'll be looking at dragging the uh, mem block and slab trees at least into MM unstable so that the other MM developers get additional visibility into upcoming MM work. And anybody? Yeah, well, I'm here to serve you guys, and you know my email address. So don't be afraid. So you're just going to kill stable, or is there a different? No, I'll keep it as it is. But I want to hurry things out of unstable into stable more rapidly than we are doing, so that the MM stable tree is more up to date. I mean, that's what's going to Linux in the next merge window. So I'd like to fill it up more quickly. That's all. Mm, get it from three, three weeks down to two weeks would be great. <laughs> yeah. uh, I do not have concerns. I would just uh, like to uh, give a feedback that uh, I really like how the process has changed. It's much more transparent and okay. um, I think that was a great step in, uh, in the right direction, I would say. Good, thank you. Uh, just a question. Can you clarify the your, your expected or your uh, what do you think is the ideal timeline for patches to stay in MM unstable before they go to MM stable? Well, say in the worst case, it's up to three weeks nowadays, and sometimes it's necessary. But often I'll see a patch server's got some unaddressed review comment, or some guy said, yeah, I'll send V3, and then nothing happens for two weeks. Please don't do that. So I'll be sending people in navy emails. It just sort of holds up the whole pipeline. And I end up crunching a whole bunch of stuff into stable just in the last week. I don't think that's good. I'd like to get them flowing more. Is the, is the implication that if somebody, if, if you pull something in the unstable and they don't think they're going to update it for the next couple of weeks to ask you to pull it back out? If it's causing a problem, yes. Uh, if it's causing problems, I'll drop it out and take, I'll take the next version. I'll generally hold version two, waiting for version three if it's not causing any problems, just to attempt to you know, keep pushing things forward. Yeah, so if, if, if you didn't get the implication, this was just to get you in the room to, 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 to yell, yell at it. 
but what, what I want to do is, is serve a role of, of medi mediating between the MM community and, 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 and the SMDK proposal about uh, that, that kind of st started from this position. And if you think about it, it's, act it's actually not, I mean, so C the idea here is, is CXL needs new MF flags and new memory zones. And of course, like when last time we added a new memory type, we didn't, we didn't do any of this, right? Oh, we did. We did add two new MF flags and we added a new zone, but this, is part, this, this was part of the PMEM work. But, but this, was, this, was, this was a hard, hard fought fight. Like I, I think I basically risked my career to get MapSync into the kernel. Like this was not, not something I would wish on somebody else to, to go through. So uh, we, don't take, we don't take adding flags lightly. And um, I think for, for this discussion to be productive, it really needs to put solutions in the other room, and, we're, and we need to talk about problems. Problems first, um, and so the the format I the format I like to do with these yeah with these kind of questions is is not a, not assume the solution, and we actually uh, Michal and I had a uh, a conversation, and. He came up with a solution as I was as I was like I thought it was a problem that couldn't be solved, and he's like, "Oh no, what if we do this?" So I really believe in. We have a lot of bright people in the room. I think um, we can we can we can talk through. Do we need these things or not? But I want to quickly walk through um, how CXL looks at the system. Just just so we're all on the same page. I felt like there were some misconceptions about how do we ad identify these things. So these window ranges at the top, these are static ranges that your platform vendor uh, puts in an ACPI table. They're static, they never change. And these tell you the possible places your CXL devices could be mapped. So that's platform designer decision, and OS has no, has no say in it. Uh, what you typically see is like, a platform will have multiple host bridges, just like today you, your, your server system has multiple PCI Express host bridges, you'll have multiple CXL host bridges, actually the same, they're actually the same thing because uh, PCIe and CXL are the same electrically. Um, in this case we have, we have four windows, we have three host bridges, and this first window is interleaving accesses across these three host bridges, and the host bridges can have an arbitrary number of for now, we'll assume arbitrary number of CXL devices beneath them. In these other windows, under other window cases, these are not interleaved. So, so this win this address range will only map something that's coming from beneath host bridge zero, and this window is only for one and two and that, that kind of thing. So, in this case, the, the operating system would be responsible for picking, like, hey, if I if I want max performance max bandwidth, I want to use Windows 0 because that is interleaved across multiple lanes and, and multiple CXL devices. Whereas this one is just a single, these ones are just single, single pipes. And you ask yourself, like, why would I want that? Well, maybe you want, if you want to maximize bandwidth, you want to pick this window, max, inter max interleave. If you want to maximize recoverability, maybe you, you just want to uh, be able to lose a, like, like if, if we're interleaved and I lose one of the devices, it's just like, it's just like, just like losing a disk out of your RAID 0, like the rest of it, your, your whole thing is gone. But you could conceivably, uh, if you're using these ones, you could lose, lose a device um, and the other, other ones would keep working. So that's, that's, a, that's a choice that the, uh, that the platform gives you. Um, uh, but, we, but we do have the concept of like multiple memory types. And, and I'm going to call them. I'm going to call them QoS classes or, or per performance classes, uh, or, 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 or properties. So you could have something like this, where where there's a window zero that's interleaved across all these host bridges, and let's just say that this is your your volatile memory um, uh, volatile memory devices, and then if you then the, then the platform also gives you another window that's also the same interleave. And we'll, we'll call these your persistent memory rest in peace uh, devices. Um, C CXL does define persistent memory, so I, even though we don't ha we're in a post-optane world, I still think somebody's going to put a battery on a CXL device and call it persistent. Um, but so, but the reason the platform gives you a two different windows is the 
is is for the case where this memory might be slower response than 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 the the volatile memory. Go ahead. So all the devices in the same window will have the same properties. Is this a guarantee or? This is a well. So there's hard guarantees like if it's like persistent versus volatile. Like those those actually have different. But for instance, CXL zero and CXL four may have different latency. Right, right, right. So so the the properties on the window that the that the platform tells you is either like the volatile persistent or or a QoS class ID. It'll say like this is class zero, zero, one, two, three. Um, the numbers don't mean anything, but they're just different QoS classes. But the reason to separate them is that if if like these devices are are, are slower storage class memory, you don't want to have like head of line blocking issues while you're trying to talk to the fa fast devices. So you give them two different two different traffic lanes to talk through, and the fast stuff can keep talking while the slow stuff's kind of taking its, taking its time, and they, they and they they don't collide with each other. I I think the point though is like there's nothing in the spec preventing a, a bad BIOS from taking slow memory and interleaving it with fast memory. Yeah. So you. Yeah. Ideally, I yeah ideally smart decisions are made in interleaving, but there 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 there's no guarantee. Yeah. And and especially with the with the performance classes, it's it's a uh, yeah the the operating system can be like hey. Um, uh, when, let's say window window four is all is all full, when you add when you hot add to some device, and um, the the operating system could, could could put it in window zero, so it, it would probably wouldn't be the optimal situation, but it's not it's not it's not mandated. Um, so what Linux does today is just the simple thing. So we yeah, we, we, we like our everything we do in six L try to do the simple thing first because there's so much complexity you, you could do. The simple thing is um, just assign a NUMA node per performance class. And so, uh, so even though we have multiple devices, and this could be you know, uh, 32 devices, they all get mapped to the same, to the same NUMA node. Um, and so what kind of problems does this, does this impose? And I think these are the main ones, but uh, Kingston will come up after me, and, and we can we can have a, have a discussion if he wants to identify identify more. But I feel like uh, what people need an ability to well. So I think most applications won't care. They say give me memory, and, and like, but, but there are, I think there are, I think I think administrators or cloud orchestrator people are going to want to say, hey, this uh, these people are are paying for the. Uh, for coach class, I want to bind them to the coach class memory, and these people are paying out the nose for the high class stuff, so I'm going to put them in the first class memory. Um, I think that's going to be a policy imposed by the by the cloud vendor. So I think we I think we need bind by performance class. I think we might need avoid by performance class because I think uh, some people or it, it seems like memories of lots of different types of uh, capabilities are going to be put behind CXL, and so the thing, some, something might be too slow for some, some applications. And this might be something the kernel wants to, uh, wants to avoid. So I think the kernel might need avoid by performance class and, and, maybe, and maybe migrate. Like, they're in coach, and they, they, there's a seat available in first class they want to upgrade. Um, as the bind by performance class was the one I think, oh, we can't solve that with NUMA nodes because, let's say, you're in coach, and uh, and uh, you're running in, in 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 that in that class, and then more memory gets added. If if you if you've bound yourself to the the to the the coach class uh, nodes that were uh, available at the time, um, this new node comes online that's also that's also in coach class. How does your application know that it can also now use this as well? But but this is when Michal said like just bind just bind to possible nodes, and yeah so it was, and it, so it was obvious to other people in the room not me but I'm, I'm not that smart but uh, so but like that's, that's an example of hey we we didn't need to invent a new node for this we just we just we just set a node mask that uh, we classify nodes through some mechanism 
and then people learn about their performance class, and then they bind to the nodes that they care about. So, so I'm curious, how, how static is your configuration? You say it comes online, like a node comes online. Do you know up front the properties of that node, like characteristics, or can some crazy CXL switchy fabric that I don't get, like add something else? replace something, upgrade performance class, I don't know, or is this completely static? It's, so so I, I, I submit a static, like, y yes, you could put devices of any any quality, Joe's, Joe's backyard CXL device in here, uh, and, and CXL switches that have crazy latencies, but at the end of the day, they're, all, it's, it, they're gonna either map to, to, to Windows 0 or Windows 1. Like, the, 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 the degrees of freedom are always limited. And so, um, the, the, the way this works in the driver is the driver says, ask the device how fast are you, calculates all the performance, uh, uh, calculates the performance from the, from the top of the system down through the host bridges, all the links, and then says, hey platform, this bandwidth and latency of memory I wanna, I wanna map, which you, and then the, the BIOS gives you back the performance, the, the, uh, the, the QoS class ID. And and that's a that's a, a static set. Okay, that's perfect. So we're not talking about hot plug of CXL devices yet. Well, we, no, well, but we I guess we're not talking about hot plug. But we are talking about like like these could be dynamic. Yeah, dynamic. But you are adding not completely new devices with characteristics, new NUMA nodes pop up. That doesn't happen. You know exactly what you have. And yeah, what, what mean, Mike has said is like you bind to the possible ones because right. you can identify the characteristics. Right. Like so. Like let, let's say there was zero devices in the system at the beginning of, beginning of time. Uh, I mean, then we plug all six in. The driver driver handles that, and and then you ask, hey, which windows are available, and you, and you map it. Um, yeah, so so we we should handle dynamic devices. So I'll plug the same. Um, the the Numa nodes, like we wanted to make it. We don't have dynamic Numa nodes in Linux. We just we just statically say, okay, there's SRAT nodes, and then we say there's, and then we add more for each performance class. And this and this pat we just pad out the possible nodes, and then that's it. Makes sense to me, thanks. I mean, you, you, you can start plugging your laptop, because th th this is my last slide. Okay, uh, so when the configuration can done, I mean, the configuration can be made after OS boot via driver time or BIOS time? All the all the above, like the, the way the, the way the driver's designed is, like, like to like let's say today's BIOSes don't support don't support uh, any level of switching. Um, the BIOS might only map the directed things that are directly attached to the host bridge. The Linux driver will say, okay, BIOS did those, but I'll do the other, I'll do the rest. So so right now the driver can do the driver will do everything the BIOS won't do. I'll put it that way. Um, okay, then so I think it is about uh, the the requirement that I wanted to address. So if the, the configuration can done uh, after OS boot via driver, so I mean uh, in a software way, flexibly without cold boot system, yeah. then I think uh, this makes sense. But, I mean, so, but even, even if you're dynamically doing it, the only place you can put it is, in, is into one of the nodes that was already there. Like you can't add, you, we're, we're not supporting adding new nodes. We're just saying, here's all the possible performance classes. And, th and there's also a hardware a hardware resource bound on the number of these windows because these actually take up they're called a sad sad tad decoder registers but these are these are fixed resources in the memory controller because when when a device like sends a DMA and it goes and it, to CXL it goes all the way up uh, and it and the the system decoder says oh this is not it, this was headed to the CXL space not the DDR space and then it sends it back down on the CXL side. And so that logic to to do that routing is these decoded registers, and that's a fixed resource. So, like the number of, I explain that to say that we're not going to have a whole ton of these. We're not we're not talking about blowing out our 1,024 node oh. numbers. I think it's, it's, it's going to be like in the in the maybe 10 or like number okay. of windows that we have to deal with on a system. Okay, for me, for me, it looks like it's, it seems like the mechanism you explained it can be smoothly integrity into under John, but yeah, uh, let me, sh 
Let me start my presentation. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, the other ones? Okay, yeah. Okay, so, so, so buying by performance class. Yeah, I feel like that's. I feel like that's get the get a, get a set of nodes that are are going to be in that classification. And if you if you plug in a device that's way below the that like because it, they ha they have to map at some point. Um, and so if you if you plug in a device that's way too low performance, it's still going to map to the same node. And that's basically it's, it's kind of your your fault as the person who put put in a, a low quality device kind of thing. Um, Avoid by performance class. This is yeah, kind of back to our discussion of like, um, do do we need some overrides to tell the kernel like, take these nodes out of your fallback list, like don't even bother, or, or um, yes, you can use these these nodes for allocation, but like the the application has has to bind to it, like if it's not a, yeah, it, it, you you can't get this by accident. You have to opt in, but that seems like something we can communicate with a node mask. Yeah, that, that's something that we do not allow right now because zone lists are uh, covering all the existing nodes or zones to be more specific, but uh, we do not have a way, or as far as I remember, we do not have a way to essentially put a node outside of the zone list. So maybe we want to enhance the uh, hot plug API and say that uh, this should be an outside node and uh, essentially when you bind to that node, then you might still have that fallback list all the way around to other nodes. So if you start there, y you eventually get a memory because otherwise we would have terrible problems like what ooms and, and stuff like that yeah. that cannot be really resolved. But uh, you start by a slow node, but there is nothing there because you haven't hot plugged anything there, but you still get your normal memory. Right. Yeah. But when you start with uh, normal memory, you do not end up on that slow thing and get surprised. Right. Right. You because otherwise, you would have to use mbind just to avoid that, and and that's really clumsy because uh, that's hard to configure properly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I think it would. This, yeah. This have to be something that the driver either does automatically or or or, or, or some other enumeration to say like, okay, the performance here is just not something that's Linux worthy for the core mm to have to worry about or need opt-in. Yeah, but for that, we would need an extension to the hot block. It wouldn't be hard to do, but right. uh, we just have to think about how to communicate that to the hot block code. Right, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, we, yeah. And, and, and the idea here is that we're not, we're not trying to avoid doing kernel changes, but like, but, but in terms of would we rather have a new zone type or do these kernel changes for these mechanisms, I, I, I haven't, yeah, I, I haven't come across why we make that, make that switch. Um, Migrate by performance class seems pretty straightforward. Just m migrate pages. Like I, I don't think if, if, if it's nodes, you just migrate nodes. Um, I don't see. So uh, just for the binding to a uh, performance class, it's uh, it is nice to have uh, another use case just bind to multiple different performance classes at the same time, but with uh, interleave uh, ratio uh, input by the users, so that will fully utilize the uh, total bandwidth between um, the DRAM on the board and the, the SEC.device. That's true, yeah. Yeah, so the, the mechanism that got added recently called mpol preferred many, yeah, the, the idea would be like you can op you opt into all the performance classes that are okay with you or, or, or you bind to the ones that you only, only want kind of thing. But yeah, you, you, you could do an interleave policy in in software, not, and not just in in the CXO hardware. Uh, one quick uh, one quick comment. Since you mentioned uh, this is a performance class, right? I assume then it's no longer just a binary value. Basically, it could be multiple different values, right? You mentioned it's, it could be up to ten, whatever. It's just an integer. So like, it's just like yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like approximately domain numbers. It has no meaning. It's just an integer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, my point is that uh, it's not a single value, right? So no, basically, is. if we want to map the performance class to zones, then basically means we're going to probably introduce multiple zones, not just a single zone. No. In, the, in this particular example, probably means that the 
two different type of loan, right? Right, right. Like, so think think of it think of it like a Numa node per window, because each window has yes, I think each window has new, one new performance. Is, yeah, yeah. I think Numa node is a very natural uh, concept. I think since in the beginning you mentioned the. Uh, should we introduce a new loan for this kind of thing? My, my comment here is that uh, if we introduce a loan, then it should not be a single loan. It should be a list of loans, right? One corresponding to each performance class. I think that might be a complexity. Right, no, I, 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 I take your point, yeah. Like, like, like a, sing, a single zone can't represent the degrees of freedom we want here because we want to be able to have gradations of CXL and, and NUMA node numbers give, gives us that, gra that gradation. So I, I just have a comment or like an, not an idea, just like a question to, to the audience. Like if we start talking about multiple nodes, would it make sense that we have some some kind of mpol policy that tells me like give, give me the slowest memory possible, like here is a set of nodes or give me the fastest one or is it really just like I'm going to bind to let's say like two classes and whatever I get is what I get. Is, is that rather what we want? Well, so the, the, the part I'm not saying is, is I like these these classes don't have any meaning. I mean, so we have we have ways to tell user space what what they are, but I'm 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 really hesitant to have an API or any kind of way for somebody to say give me fastest because everybody's going to say give me fastest. No, no, I, I like uh, I expressed it the wrong way. It's okay. more like right now when you define an M policy, it's like preferred many, so you prefer multiple ones. But it's right. not that you can define like a hierarchy, like first try from node oh, three, first. then from node two, and then from, from node whatever. I'm, I'm just wondering if that, that could be desirable to express something like, yeah, like I'm really interested in the slowest possible memory, but if that one node is depleted, then maybe like... Isn't that the fallback order? But is that like I think like with mbind you can actually run out of memory if one of the right. nodes is depleted, no? Is it, yeah. is is the is the preference? Not, Go ahead. Yeah, not with ample uh, preferred many. Uh, yeah, so essentially you can just say I want all eight of them or whatever the n number will be, and um, you start by you start somewhere and then go through the zone list order. Yeah, it, there, there is no. You want to add something? I just kind of wanted to dig into the yet that was talked about on Hot Plug of what? different performance classes. Um, uh, it, the comment about can you have new CXL devices show up of different performance classes? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, eventually, that would be uh, a desire, right? Right, but like, like let, let's let's say we had uh, like all these windows were like oh, only only one window. So all these eight windows are are, are, are mapped to CXL devices, except window four has one little bit of space, and then CXL six comes in, and we ask it's its performance, and it doesn't match the performance class of window four. We we have a choice of leaving it unmapped or just mapping it at the wrong performance class. And right now, my policy is just map it at the wrong performance class. Um, until somebody screams, like, like uh, I think having capacity is better than like having less performance is better than zero performance. So, so I'm not too. I'm basically like putting the onus on system designers to say, yeah, if, make sure make sure you have enough window capacity. Make sure you plug in devices with the compatible things. But if you don't, the kernel will do best effort, and we won't we won't be strict about it because that's makes being strict is is more difficult. So if they got a system running on a bunch of switch attached DDR4 based modules and they're over time upgrading to DDR5 because the DDR4 is dying right. or whatever. Um, like is, is, it, is it practical for them to, to be able to understand that when they hot plug, like what's the onlining process? How do, how do they make sure it shows up in the right window? Um, like, 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 the running with DDR four, and then they, and then they, uh, they swap with those devices with DDR five kind of thing. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, like, I, I think that's fine. Yeah, like, you, you unplug, unplug these. The capacity gets freed up out of the window. You bring up the new devices. Ask which window has capacity for them. Pick that one as your preference, and if it's not, if it's not available, just pick any other window, just to get it mapped. But yeah, like, but um, yeah, that that should be fine. Okay. 
agree with the, the architecture and way to use it, but uh, what it becomes a, a new John, because uh, the reason we selected the John instead of a node was, uh, you know, the John actually implement uh, the actual memory management algorithms like a convection or reclaim mark, watermark or migration or anti preparation something like that. So, so but uh, there is a no specific algorithm for node scale. So, what if we, we make it as a new John? So you're saying that you want to have reclaim policy, like node reclaim policy. John reclaim or compaction or migration or an anti plagiarization that algorithms currently applied on John John level. So I think uh, for the CXL needs we probably need to revisit the algorithms on CXL memory. So when you become a node, the the current Linux implementation the algorithms are not applied on node but John John. So probably it is uh, yeah good to apply. Can anybody else help me out with that question about uh, core MM migration and compaction policy and whether we would, that would need to grow to become node aware or, 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 is, it, or is it zone aware? Anybody can? Zones are internal memory management abstraction that shouldn't leak outside of the memory management, core memory management. So if uh, there are any API limitations that parts of the kernel would like to work with something and they are forced to use struct zone as an argument, that's a good reason to change that to be node-based. Yeah. yeah. There is a reason, one reason that we choose it, the, the John. Because the John is, as you told us, is, 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 is an internal algorithm, internal implementation. So, but node is widely coupled with uh, uh, other other kernel sub subsystems even and user subsystems. So as you told that uh, even with the, the performance window, there will be probably five or 10 nodes on the system wide. Then they, if we make it, it, it as a single node, then probably you know, the kernel side could make uh, the abstraction layer to make it single node. Then the where the kernel module needed is uh, the node level, so which is uh, widely connected to other subsystems. So if we, if we choose uh, the John level, uh, it is connected to the less kernel subsystems then. So. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I always keep coming back to the observation that node numbers and zone numbers are in the same like bit field of, of, of the struct page, of the page flags. Um, and that any any operation that you'd want to run on a on a z like if, if if your zone is a boundary of, a, of like a memory of a, of a certain like uh, physical address range, like you can you can just convert that one number into just a in, into a node mask. Like if you, if you want to say I want to migrate all CXL, you just find you just you just create a node mask of all the CXL of all the CXL nodes, and then and then do your operation. So I'm missing the part where we can't do it with with a node mask. Like I, I, I feel like I feel like a new zone and a node mask number are basically analog or um, logically the same thing. Yeah, realistic, <laughs> realistically speaking, uh, with uh, this kind of memory, we are talking about zone normal or zone movable, right. and most likely zone movable in 90% of cases because you simply do not want to have a lot of your uh, kernel metadata sitting there just without any actual intention to be allocating from that. So so you might have both those of those zones, but um, you define that by how you allocate, right? So. Yeah, and, and, and right now we're really, we're really, uh, uh, piggybacking on a lot of, a lot of David's, David's work in, in, in Red IO Mem about like uh, hot plug policy and reserving a little bit of, like if you're adding a terabyte, maybe you need some percentage of it to be zone normal and, and the other percentage to, to be zone movable. So 
and, and all these in all these kind of questions about zone partitioning, I'm like, let's do the exact same thing that Verde Oman is doing. Um, I, I see a smile. So. <laughs>